Hey everyone, Flying Duchy here, and guess who is back? We have another try for Rome 2 Total War. I have been playing a bit uh, myself uh, off screen, and I still want to do a campaign on the channel. We tried before, and yeah, we did not like the game that much. At least I didn't like it that much. But I'm gonna give it another try, because I learned a lot of things now, so things make a bit more sense. So uh, let's see how the game will feel this time. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna make a new campaign here. We're gonna go gonna play the grand campaign and it will be a beginner campaign for the people that missed the the first uh, try which we'll just explain a lot of things that I know now so that people that did not play the game also understand what I'm doing so uh, yeah if you are a advanced player this might not be that interesting for you uh, we're gonna play as the Julia campaign the house of Julia as Rome and we'll play on normal difficulty this time because I'm still a, a newbie to this game and uh, let's uh, start the game. All the graphics are on the highest difficulty, so it should look better. I also increase the unit sizes because it, uh, yeah, it gives a better feeling, I guess, on the battlefield. And uh, yeah, let's see how it will go this time. Okay, let's see what the advisor has to say at the start. You are at war with the Etruscan League. March north and capture their territories. This will allow you to consolidate Italia and ensure the safety of Roma. You must wage war if you hope to extend your dominion. Syracuse and Carthage own territory in Magna Graecia, so conflict with them is inevitable if you wish to expand across the Mediterranean. Otherwise, they may prove useful allies against Etruria or the Gaulish tribes to the north. Come what may, Rome will triumph. Alrighty then. And this is our first objective. We need to control two provinces, either by direct ownership or through client states and military allies. And then we get 2,500 uh, denarii, I guess, in this game. Let's call them denarii. We have, this is our treasury. 5,000. And the goal is to get the province of Italia, which is these four settlements. And then we get our f uh, first uh, province, and the next province we, we really want is uh, Magna Grecia. Therefore, we need to go to war with the Syracuse, who likes us a little bit right now because we are trading with them. And Carthage, which will become my enemy. And Carthage is over here. I think they own also this uh, town. No, I don't. maybe not. This one, this one, this one. They own the one on the Baleares, and they have some uh, land in Spain. First to the north, we have all the barbarians. And to the south, we have the... Uh, the more established countries uh, after the fall of Alexander the Great. So Egypt, the Seleucids, Thrace, and the Greek cities as well. For example, uh, Syracuse is also a Greek settlement. And also Massilia is a Greek settlement over here. So we start the game with, uh, with a war against uh, the Etruscans. They have three towns. Alalia in the province of Corsica and Sardinia, which is two pro uh, uh, cities only. And they own the two in Italia. So we will of course try to get all of Italia under our control at the start. Uh, we do have a spy. We are going to use our spy to uh, see what's around us. And uh, we can see that there is an army over here. Uh, but it looks like that uh, Velatri has no garrison. So we could go there uh, pretty soon. And I don't see any other armies. So let's uh, advance our army and attack this... Um, this army over here, and then we take Velatri, and then in the next turn we will take Ariminum. Let's go. And I will fight a couple of battles on the battlefield. Just to make sure that my general is getting all the experience. Because the more he gets, the better traits he is going to get, and the stronger the unit will be. So it's my, uh, my plan to actually run down as much armies as I can. I don't know what the... Uh, archers cannot use flaming arrows. It is more difficult to set fire to building and ships. And units takes longer to recover from t fatigue. No, we don't want that. We don't want rain. Let's see if we can get uh, dry. Yes, there we go. Okay. Um, oh, we are at the back of the map. I was like, why can I not go further down? So these are uh, Velites. They are throwing javelins. And these are also um, missile infantry, but they are just a little bit weaker. 
Also, these units can use a flaming shot, but flaming shots are less inaccurate and they will lower the morale, but I think we need to do damage, really. So what we are going to do is put these things over here. You can see that the armies are a bit bigger compared to last time. We will make them control one. I have Stati are uh, medium swords infantry, and they also throw... Um, I guess javelins as well. They're gonna go here. And this is my general on a horse over here. And he has a circle around it and that is his influence area. Now, let's start the battle. We are going to move forward. You can also use the arrow keys to uh, march forward. Don't run because that will give you fatigue. I will just let them walk and just uh, fast forward the battle. We have one hour to complete it. Um, when this thing is here, they are not visible, thanks to the forest. And we can also not see their army, because there is a hill over here. And because there is a hill, it is harder to find where their troops are. I will try to make use of the hill a bit here. Uh, Control A selects everyone. You should not run. Because uh, you can see they are now fresh, then they fight the best. Uh, they do have a bit more morale, and I think that is because of my general. Not sure, actually, why we already have a boost. Could be of some of some traits. Okay, they also have some uh, archer units, I think. And these are... Levy skirmishers from the enemy. They don't do anything yet. Okay, let's just make, make uh, my army walk in the right spots. Let's just make them run. This is taking long enough. We are going to move slightly forward. We're going to make you guys run. Let's see if we can get in range and start firing. I will put them on skirmish mode, so when an enemy gets close, they will run away. Okay, we move forward. And then... We will do the attack here. Let's use my cavalry to maybe flank. Okay, they should start throwing their javelins, just as the enemy did. Yeah, there we go. Okay, they are sending their spears forward. Uh, my swords are better against it. Oh, that's not good. Let's pause the video. We need to attack the cavalry. You need to go here, and you need to start running around and attack these skirmishes in the back. Because the uh, cavalry is charging against my uh, javelins, my levies. That is horrible. We need to hold the line here. You guys need to run away. Back the lines here. So, like this. Let's see if we're not gonna... Get our armies uh, killed. No, we are just in time, so that's really nice. And you attack the archers. Perfect. You need to run a bit around. Same for you, because if we attack them in the back, we're gonna get uh, more kills quicker. Yeah, yeah, he is under attack, but we are killing them, so. So you guys are at the back, and the same counts for you. Attack this, and you guys can fire where you please. And then we win the battle. So it's really important that he is going to kill as many things as possible, because then he gets more experience, and then this unit gets stronger. Same counts for all the other units. Ooh, that was a nice throw against the, their cavalry. I don't really like it that we are getting chased by the enemy general. Let's go back behind our other troops. And ask my normal troops to attack the cavalry. Then we will go back here. You guys need to kill everyone to get all the experience. Yeah. Then we are almost done. You can also inspire yourself. The enemy general is 
dead. Okay, we killed their general. Let's try to kill as many troops as we can. And get the most experience. We already have a, an XP rank 1. You can see that we already have more melee attack and more defense. So that is really nice. Uh, there are a couple of units left over here. Let's kill them. Speed up the game. Can we get some kills? Not really. Okay. And then we will just quit the battle. We lost 59. They lost 337. 116 kills. This unit has 102 kills. So that one is almost uh, the next level as well. And my javelins did not do anything really. And chop. Now, we can release them for 200 wealth. We can enslave them and get a bit more slaves in the empire for more taxes and more wealth. Or we can kill them. Let's just release them and get a Waiting bit of wealth. Now, my general is now level 2. Ready for orders. That means that we can give him a skill. He already has uh, Patientia, a firm hand or fellow uh, of the ship of state. Two cultural conversion. He can inspire that we just used. And he has plus one siege hold out if he is in the city. Um, he has a bit of public order from the military presence. He gets more gravitas per turn. That is really good because he is part of my family. He is my leader of the family. We'll talk about that later. Uh, even more authority. Lose a bit out of taxation. So there are a lot of uh, skill trees you can pick. And I think it is very important that we get campaign map movement range when he is a general. And he gets an ability called Second Wind. And I think that uh, removes the fatigue modifiers later in the game. But I'm not sure about that yet. Um, and we also want to get our units just better. And that is also over here. We can get 30% charge bonus. And melee attack. So we can also go this way. And here we get uh, an ability into the breach. And we get more melee attack and shots per minute. And more morale when we have an offensive battle. So maybe we should just go over this one here. He also gets more gravitas, which makes him uh, more popular, I think, at the Senate. Now, we still have movement battle. points left. So we can take the city. Um, I'm going to fight this battle as well. Because I want to get as much experience at the start as possible. We are already a uh, rank 1. Let's try to get a rank 2. No idea if we can, of course. It's raining. Let's see if it, we can get some uh, dry. There we go. So the plan is to take this thing here, but they will defend it. And we have to try to take it. Well, we can come from a hill over here, so maybe we should do that. Control 1. You guys are control 2, and you are not having anything. Let's uh, move forward. And don't run. Okay, there are the armies. Let's see what they're going to do. Are they going to attack me? That is a spear infantry. So we don't want to use our cavalry on it. But we do want to use our swordsmen on it. Okay, they are running their cavalry towards me. That is getting a bit scary. Let's make you guys run. Are oh, you already running? General! Before they are running into my javelins and kill everything. Okay, stop again. And now we have to just put a couple of the flanks and you three are going in the middle. I think they are going to run towards me, so that's really nice because then we can use our missiles and they have to run uphill which makes it um, pretty meh for them now they are actually in range and I am not so they have more range than me let's move them a bit more forward Fire. Forward. You also forward. 
Are you firing? Yes, you are. Yeah, they're sending uh, frontward some spears. They stopped w moving forward. Uh, yeah, they are killing my normal troops. That is not that great, actually. Okay, we are now in range of uh, some units, so we start using all our uh, javelins, which is really nice, because then we can kill a lot of their troops. But their cavalry is in the way, so we are actually going to just run them down. Oh, I forgot to put these guys on skirmish. They need to run a bit backwards, and you need to start charging, really. And you give this one an Inspire. Yeah, we cannot let him die really, so I will uh, walk out of here. Forward. Why are you not running away? You are in the middle of all the fire. Okay, they are running away. So, just need to kill the archers. And some ammunition is done. The javelins used all the ammunition. Now we just need to run down all these archers. And we are going to do this with my cavalry. Because he needs the experience, really. They should all run away. Now, let's speed up the game. You are done. One of our units has used all its and you're gonna go and take this one down. Let's see how much experience we get. We only have 24 kills at the moment, so that's not that much. Okay, it's going up, let's continue. And kill all these archers with my cavalry. I think that was it. Yeah, is there anything else on the map still? Not really. Okay, let's quit the game. Quit the battle, and the battle. We lost 59, they lost 676. And we have two Hastata units rank 1, which is also really good. Charge! Almost no deaths, which means we can replenish very quickly, which is also really good. And now we can choose what we will do with this settlement. Now, since this is already Roman culture, or Latin culture, I think it's called, uh, we should occupy it so we don't get any provincial instability. That is for the whole province of Italia. We will get minus 5. If I do this, we get minus 20, and it will only go uh, up with 1 every turn. So minus 19, minus 18. That takes a long time. And we also damage buildings. We don't want that because we need to repair the buildings. The same counts for the raising. So, we will occupy the settlement. Command. Commander is level 2. Let's see what we can give him now. We can give him a tradition. There are three traditions. You can do an engineering expert, which in the end will give you armor for your siege units. And we can uh, build heavy siege engines and medium siege engines. We can do accomplished skirmishers. We get uh, at the third level 9% more missile damage and 6% shot per minute for all units. Or we go formidable fighters, we get more melee attack skill and weapon damage by all the army units. Now we will go with that one. Rome is known for their good army units. And we can have a new trade. No, we don't. Because we are not rank 3 yet. We missed 2 experience for it. We used our spy. We will Next turn we will go to our uh, Ari Ariminum. They will replenish a little bit in the next turn. So that was that army. Uh, we have a navy, but that is a really weak navy. Uh, but we have no other ways of getting a better navy. We do have, however, in Brundisium, a military wharf. So we can build uh, light artillery units. And we also have uh, missile quincarines. Let's see how good they are, actually. 
Can I see that over here? No, then I have to move there. Well, I, I can see it when I right click here. That is this one. Archers can shoot down upon many enemies from the deck, doing terrible work in the process. These javelin armed skirmishers are fast moving and lightly armored. So this ship has a good hull strength and the crew is medium. It can also ram. And uh, I think this is a really good unit at the start of the game. Uh, but in Neapolis we only have a port. Now what I can do is instead of building a military wharf I can build a ship right. And then we unlock these buildings. So we have an assault uh, berein with Hastati on it. And also with um, an auxiliary unit, so spears. And then we can maybe um, uh, just land on a <clears throat> couple of people and take their boats down. Now, I think it's important that we're also going to get the uh, ship right. We do have a military wharf over there. Let's get a ship right as well and we get some assault beer aims. So I think that's important because we need to get to this island to finish off the Etruscans. Uh, these three boats are not that strong. This one is actually pretty good. There are 120 on it, on this ship. And it's an uh, assault quadrim with principes on it, so that is a really good one. But let's uh, go into the port here and wait for some uh, assault hastati. As, as you can see, we can only build the raiding hemiola, hemiolia, which are the weakest units. And I don't want to build these, really. Now, we also have an army over here. Commander. This general has a green thing around his portrait, and that means that he is from another family. Um, I think that it's time for us to look at the faction screen. So, we at the moment only have two characters. We have uh, uh, my wife, I guess, Lucretia, and we have ourselves. We don't have any children yet. Um, and if we go to the, the politics here, we have, see we have three other houses in the government. The House of Papiria, the House of Junia and Cornelia. At the moment they are still loyal. As you can see here. The, the longer this number is above zero, they will stay loyal. And here are some traits. They also change over time. Let's not look at it right now. Um, so most of the factions are actually pretty okay with me. Exceptionally uh, Junia. They have some green traits only so it's very easy to make them happy uh, you only have the bigger trait but you have two good ones so the, the pa papiria uh, faction should also not be any problems the cornelia pr uh, family can become a problem now the more influence we get the more senators we get and then we get more bonuses so the further we go the more research rate tax rate and morale we get for our army up all the way up to 20% and 20% and 15% over here. Now that would be of course very uh, good for us to get all the way over here. So yeah, you can secure loyalty. So you get more loyalty for all the parties for 10 turns, but it costs money. And we don't have to do this because they are all above zero. So there is nothing going on. I can do whatever I want right now. Uh, this is just an uh, Imperium level. We can have four armies at the moment, two fleets. One dignitary, a spy and a champion, the agents on the uh, on the campaign map. And the more we take, uh, the harder it will be to keep the factions happy. As you can see, if we are going to become a huge Imperium, uh, we are going to get all kinds of, uh, of penalties. So the, 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 the more we grow, the more penalties we get. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you? I don't think there's anything else really. Yeah, you can do actions, you can give a gift and that kind of things with the different uh, things. You can do intrigue with my wife. My wife can do an, can send an emissary somewhere. She can organize uh, games, but it all costs money. And she can send uh, a diplomat, but we get less loyalty to the other parties. She can assassinate. <laughs> she can spread rumors. I don't want to do this. We can do a favor. 
What can you do? You can only do uh, a favor and send a gift at the moment. We can get a diplomat and do other things, but I'm not really interested in all of this. Now, when we get a child and it is a, uh, a woman, we can marry her off to, for example, the leader of the, of the Cordelia family, and then we have more loyalty. That is what I will try to do over there. Now, you are part of the Cornelia family because you have a green circle. Green circle around your uh, template. And I don't like this one because he is not on a horse. So I wonder, can I replace a general in this game? I don't remember. Can we disband the unit? If, what happens when I press Dell? Let me make a save first before everything goes wrong. Dell. I can't. <laughs> but I, I think I saw somewhere that you can replace generals. But I'm not sure about it anymore. I don't like this unit. This unit is horrible. <laughs> yeah, we cannot use um, our armies separate from a general, I think. I think when I do this, the whole army will move here. Advance. Right? Yeah. Ready for orders. Uh, so, we could increase the armies for this general. And maybe go after Syracuse and uh, Lilibeum to get the Magna Grecia province under our control. That's what we can do. Not sure yet. What kind of generals can I make? So you can see that this one is of the of the other house, I think Papyria. That is is that my color? Junia. Cornelia, Cornelia, Papyria, Junia. I am Junia, right? No, I am Julia, so we cannot make a general at the moment from our own faction. Junia, Cornelia. No. We have no Julia. We have Junia. So maybe we should make uh, them from the house of Junia and uh, Papiria because they are okay to me. But if we have an option to make someone from our faction, I think you should do it. Because that gives your faction more gravitas, with, which gives you more bonuses. But I'm not completely sure how that works. So let's uh, use our rest of our money. Um, it's important to keep the Roma uh, city grow. At the moment it's a city, it gives 3 growth per turn, and if we go to a civil colonia we get 5 growth per turn, but we will also lose minus 1 food, and at the moment we have no food surplus, we are at 0. This one we have plus 1, in Magna Grecia we have minus 1 food. Um, so if I do this one, which I really want to do because I get more wealth and I get uh, more growth, which will make this go further, then we get more population to expand our cities. So uh, we will go with a civil colonia because it gives more growth. This gives more uh, garrison units. We don't need that in Rome. Then we have 1100 left. And what I really need is a farm or something. Because we are losing out of food. So maybe we should uh, use one population over here in Velatri that we just conquered. And we are going to build a villa over here. That is the uh, agricultural building. And get some food to counter this. I think that is a good start uh, to do. And we also build our uh, ship right. Now I think we are done with this turn. We need to take some research. Uh, you can click on something that you want. And then the whole tree towards that mo point will go. Uh, we can build a dry docks and a docks at level 3 with that one. And this will give minus recruitment cost and upkeep cost. That is actually not bad. And we get the auxiliary barracks. Practice field, ship. We don't care about ships really. Boiling oil. Yeah, I don't think we get attacked that any any quickly on normal difficulty. Uh, let's go with this one, the training reforms. Get uh, less our upkeep. Sounds great to me. We have to get this one first. The supply reforms. Then we go and get manipular organization. More ammunition for the missiles. And we can make uh, champions. And then we will do this one. Okay. Now, last thing that we need to look at is diplomacy. Um, I can choose if I want to become allies with Syracuse or take them down. 
I would love to take this one for myself because there is a grain resource, I think, that we are trading right now. Yes. Well, maybe not actually. I thought there was something like uh, grain over there. Uh, let's have a look. We can trade with Massilia. That is this one. They are Greek. Let's see if they I want to trade to with me. If you speak honestly. Okay, they want to trade. That's nice. Uh, Liguria, do you want to trade? We will gladly listen to your offers. No. I do not think of. Epirus hates me. Carthage hates me. Athens does not hate me, and we can Greetings, trade with my them. Friend. You have my. They don't want to. I think. And what about you? Enter, friend, and speak. No. Okay. No I don't need any non-aggression pacts, I think. So we let's just uh, go to the next turn and see what happens. Okay, Carthage declares war, just like uh, the last time. Going through all the factions. There we go. Well, first things first, we are going to continue towards our, our Imanum. Let's use our spy and see if there's any armies. It seems uh, completely free to take, but it will take an extra turn. So uh, what I can do is put my troops here, so we get one more unit to uh, replenishment. And then in the next turn we will go and take it. What else we can do is uh, recruit some more units right now to this army. Because we did not move uh, on enemy territory. And I think I will do this, but let's see uh, a little bit later. So I think that I don't like this unit. Because it's not on a horse. I really don't like this general. Do you have any traits that gives uh, bonuses to... Taxation. Not really. So what I can do is go here and raise a new army and put a general on a horse. That is way better. I wish I could see what... Oh, this... Local party member. The local party member willingly help to administrate minus three upkeep costs for army only. Well, let's get those bonuses, I guess. So we can do this one from House of uh, Papiria. And you are from the House of Junia. And you seems to be better. So I will raise the army here. On a horse. I am going to put the units. This panel is used to manually merge armies or fleets in order to assemble the strongest possible force. To you, and I will not click give this general anything. Move, <laughs> then click on the tick button to move it. He's not going to get anything. It is I will just put him in Neapolis to uh, fight any uh, people coming in with boats, because you can take cities with taking over the port. So. And you are the new commander, and I will give you some troops over here. So, most of them that I want is Hastati. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's get a couple of these. Let's do one for now. I'm going to do this two turns, and then I will go after Syracuse. And then also at uh, Lilibaeum. Uh, maybe I can get military access from Syracuse and take Lilibaeum first, but let's just take Syracuse first because it's a bit safer. Okay, we did all of thing over there. We have 1200 money left. I can expand Rome. Let's do it. We have one population left now. And I can build another field of Mars. We already have one. We could go with the other tree. There are two trees. You can go to the Legionary Barracks and Auxiliary Garrison. Uh, the barracks give different horse types, which can be really good. Uh, but we also need um, some public order. Maybe I will get build a consecrated ground here. And maybe get uh, the Pantheon in the end. We get more influence with our political party. And we get 20% more wealth with this building. 
from all resources. And I think you can only build a level 5 in your capital city. But I'm not sure about that yet because I never went there before. You can get wealth from 30% uh, wealth from uh, maritime commerce. But 20% from all is, I think, really good. So let's uh, build the consecrated ground. We get some uh, public order in two turns. And uh, we can build maybe one more unit here. Let's do it. And then we are out of money. And then I will end the episode here. In the next episode we will take uh, Ariminum. Uh, in two turns we can build a navy. Like six or seven boats. So that we can actually go to Alalia. Yeah, and we will try to take down uh, Syracuse over here. So hopefully see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, t say something in the comment section. And then I see you in the next one. Bye bye.